Check it out, Sam. This thing looks like a cross between a swordfish and an iguana. It's got to be our weirdest looking relative ever. I don't think so. Everyone, the Bonehead Detectives are back on the fossil trail, but this time we're trying something a little different. It's the first ever musical version of the show. <laughs> Actually, um, I'm just warming up. My band, the Screaming Boneheads, have practice later on today. Want to hear some of our stuff? Uh, maybe later, Sam. We should get started. You're right. Um, today we're going to shake our family tree all the way down to its roots. And I'm not the only one in my family who's into rock. Here's Grandpa. He was a dino detective back in the old days, before it was cool. And that's him playing his axe. But go way, way, way back in the history of rock, and you'll find someone even more famous. There she is, our great, great, great Grandma Demetrodon. The way she looked about 280 million years ago. I know what everyone's thinking. There's no family resemblance. But believe it or not, that giant finback is our distant relative. Not so fast, Sammy. That's today's mystery. Are humans descended from Dimetrodon, this ancient reptile who ruled the world before the dinosaurs? That's an excellent question, and the boneheads are in the field dusting for prints and on the case. Our search begins in the great state of Texas. This area is called the Red Beds, and boneheads have been coming here for years to learn more about life before the dinosaurs. This hunting ground is one of the hottest of the fossil hotspots. Temperatures get up to 110 degrees. But that doesn't keep the bone hunters away. Look, the place is pretty much crawling with them. Not to mention things like rattlesnakes, scorpions, and these poisonous centipedes. Well, you've got to watch your step in the red beds. That's Tim Rowe. He's a paleontologist who's trying to figure out what life was like for Dimetrodon. This is Lady Di in her natural habitat. As you can see, Texas looked a whole lot different 280 million years ago. Today, Tim and his team are here trying to pick up Dimetrodon's ancient trail. This area is so full of fossils that each time it rains, new evidence is exposed. There's lots of great stuff to find but you have to know what to look for. Fortunately for us, Tim spent most of his life studying the pre-dinosaur days. He's got a nose for the bones, and even though this might look like an old pile of rocks to you or me, Tim knows right away what he's got. A piece of Dimetrodon's backbone, over 250 million years old. That's really a beautiful specimen. It's wonderful to be able to come out here in just a few hours see something like this, something I've never seen before, and not have to sweat for the entire summer, you know, and just dig into the ground in a couple hours, and there it is. It's really wonderful. Finding a nearly complete skeleton of Dimetrodon is a dream come true for Tim and his bonehead detective team. And when he looks at its skull, it's almost like looking in a mirror. That's our own family history, and we can track it very deeply back into time. Most people think of human history in terms of a few millions of years and our relationships to apes, but we can track our own history from a form like this back nearly 300 million years to an animal like this, like Demetrodon here. It might be your family history, but it's not mine. I don't know anyone who looks like that. I do. Stevie Nussbaum. He's got a two-foot mohawk. So little Stevie Nussbaum went and grew a mohawk? Yeah, but he's not so little anymore. This kid is six foot five. Well, counting as a two-foot mohawk. Well, that's quite impressive. Yeah, but not half as impressive as his wing. He is the reason that screaming boneheads rock as hard as they do. Here, listen. Sammy, you know I can't wait to hear one of your songs, but we've got to check in on Dimetrodon. She's not getting any younger, you know. 
Yeah, she's definitely past her prime, but still, you gotta give the lady her props. She's one of the superstars of evolution. Just look around. All the mammals you see today are here thanks to Lady Dimetrodon, including you. She's cool. She just doesn't look like family. What you need is a serious dose of history. Then let's get the party started, Mr. Timeline. Turn up the stereo and put out the chips. This is a story that starts with slippery salamanders and goes all the way to the screaming boneheads. Amphibians crawled out of the muck and moved to dry land 350 million years back. Pretty soon, reptiles were running the show. And that's where Dimetrodon comes in. She eventually led to a group of reptiles called proto-mammals. Most boneheads think the proto-mammals were the ancestors of the mammals that showed up during the age of the dinosaurs, here in the early Jurassic. And from there, you can clearly see an unbroken evolutionary line all the way to Stevie Nussbaum and his patented outrageous mohawk. That's it. I've rest my case. No further questions. Case closed. Well there, Sam. I've got a question. What about that sale? What's it for, huh? Your fancy timeline didn't explain that, did it? There are a few different theories about that sale. Now, of course, I'd love to explain it to you, but unfortunately, after all my time traveling, I'm uh, <clears throat> kind of worn out. So, I'm going to let my man Tim Rowe feel that one. Tim? The sale of Dimitrodon is a really interesting feature. It's made up of a series of tall spines like this that form a big sail extending behind the skull of the animal. There's no animal alive that has a feature anything like this, and so its function is really controversial. There are basically two ideas on what the sail is for. The first, and probably most widely accepted, is that it's a heat radiator. that it, uh, is for gaining or losing heat more quickly. The second one is for sex. Sex? D did he just say sex? You know, this is supposed to be a family show. It's just a fact of life, Sam. Dimetrodon had to reproduce like any other animal. But when this guy here looks at the sail, he sees a thermostat, not a babe magnet. He's Dr. Nicholas Houghton of the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. Right after he checks his ham he's baking, he's going to explain his theory. The sail probably functioned as both a radiator and a heat absorber. As a heat absorber, it would, would allow an animal to warm, warm up faster than the animals were not so equipped. And if it was a predator, it would get going after lunch more quickly. If it were prey, it could get out of the way faster. And so it probably got pretty hot, too. And this would be a problem with an animal as big as Dimetrodon. And to get rid of extra excess heat, it would simply turn so that the sail was parallel with the rays of the sun, and its higher temperature would then be radiated off into the air, and it could cool off. 